Thank you. So I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me, and I'd like to thank all of you for being here, and uh, it's lovely to be in Lumini. So this work is addressing a question in the Kekris Pestov Todorovic paper, which paraphrased asks what infinite structures can carry infinite dimensional Ramsey theory. So finite dimensional Ramsey theory is what you know maybe as the infinite Ramsey's theorem. And we call it finite dimensional because the objects being colored are finite sets. So even though we're finding an infinite subset where there's one color, the, the objects we're being, that are being colored are finite objects. Okay, so an infinite dimensional Ramsey theory talks about spaces with a topology because when you want to color infinite sets, if you have the axiom of choice and you're able to have any subsets of any sort that you want, you can make a bad coloring where no matter which infinite subset you take, you're gonna have both colors keep appearing. So we're gonna restrict ourselves to a topological space. Um, for starters, the bare space. So we've got the metric topology given by the, the cones. And we're gonna say that a set is Ramsey in old-fashioned terminology, pre-stable book, uh, if for every infinite set, there's gonna be an infinite subset where either this cube is contained in X or is disjoint from X. So the Nash-Williams theorem started this infinite dimensional Ramsey quest uh, by showing that Klopin sets are Ramsey. And then the galvin prickery theorem extended that to Borel sets. And Silver's theorem, which was proved after the galvin prickery theorem, despite the publication dates, uh, says the analytic sets are Ramsey. And then the culmination of all of this is Ellen Tuck's theorem. And Ellen Tuck showed that sets with the property of bare in a refined topology, a refinement of the bare space, are Ramsey. And so we're gonna use this notation of a KPT to say this star means that we're coloring definable subsets, definable meaning bare, uh, meaning property of bare, or analytic, or Borel, something like that. So this is the idea of infinite dimensional Ramsey theory on omega. So let's look at Ellen Tuck's theorem a little bit more. The Ellen Tuck topology is generated by these basic open sets, or you may know it as Matthias forcing, where you're looking at a finite head, an infinite tail, and you're looking at all of the subsets of A, which are infinite, which end extend S. So this gives you a refinement of the metric topology. And Ellen Tuck's theorem really says that if you're given any collection of infinite subsets of omega with the property of bare with respect to this refined topology, then this star condition is gonna hold, which is saying that for every basic open set in the Ellen Tuck topology, you're going to find some end extension of S into A so that now this basic open set is either contained in X or disjoint from X. Yes? Is the A in the definition of this topology arbitrary? It must be infinite. Sure. Otherwise arbitrary. Okay. If it doesn't end extend S, then this is just empty. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, in the terminology of the galvin prickery paper, star is called complete Ramsey, and in Stavo's book, it's called Ramsey. Okay, so the Ellen Tuck space is the prototype for something that is called a topological Ramsey space. Um, 
this terminology was coined um, first in Carlson Simpson and then extended vastly in Stavo's book. And these are roughly spaces where you have members which are infinite sequences, which are sort of analogs of omega, uh, with a topology that's in induced by some Ellen Tuck like basic open sets with finite heads and infinite tails, and then every subset with a property of bare with respect to that topology satisfies the star relation. Okay. So if you're thinking back to the main question that I, I, that I asked at the beginning of what structures have infinite dimensional Ramsey theory, well, any structure that um, appears as members of the topological Ramsey space will satisfy this. but there are not that many known, <laughs> that's the problem. So now um, the actual problem in KPT is 11.2, and it says to develop infinite dimensional Ramsey theory for Freise structures. So a Freise structure is the Freise limit of some Freise class, so it's a class of finite objects, and you wanna put some natural topology on it. Well, since these are countable objects, you would just think to list the members of your, of your domain space or your domain or universe in order type omega, and then ask for you know, which definable sets are gonna have this infinite dimensional Ramsey property. So the star, you know, interpret as you can, as you can make it work. Okay, so very little has been known. As I pointed out before, any, any topological Ramsey space that has members which are these Freise structures would satisfy this. But um, the only ones that we know are natural numbers as a set and the rationals if you code them using Millikan strong trees. So, the Rado graph, to remind you, is the Freise limit of the class of all finite graphs, and it is the ultra-homogeneous graph, which is universal for countable graphs. So ultra-homogeneous means that when you have two finite graphs and an isomorphism between them inside of the Rado graph, then you extend that to an automorphism of the whole Rado graph. Um, and universal just means that every countable graph embeds into it as an induced subgraph. So the question, um, is there some analog of Galvin Prickery silver or Ellen Tuck for the radograph? Okay, so how should we topologize these things so that they work? Okay, so the theorem for this talk is that there is a way to topologize it. It's the one that you think, it's just the bare space topology. And then, you can find a space of radiographs where every Borel subset is Ramsey. So in details, what do, what do I mean by this? Um, there's a subspace, which I'm gonna call script R, of the bare space, where every point in the space represents a radiograph by some coding as subsets of omega, so that for any Borel subset of R, and every radiograph in this space, you can find a subgraph of the given one, so you're looking at like a cube now, a subcube, where the collection of all the subgraphs of R prime in this space are either contained in or disjoint from X. Okay. Is every radiograph representative in space? No, and there's a good reason why because it's impossible. <laughs> um, so I will explain that in a few slides. Um, so let's, we have this as Boban <laughs> thought ahead. There is a restriction and we have to restrict to one strong simil similarity type. And if you don't do that, then it's impossible to get one color. So, I'm just reminding you that the finite ordered graphs have the Ramsey property, um, but if you go to the Rado graph, then they don't have the Ramsey property, but they have something which is the best thing they can have, which I've spoken about before, which is these finite big Ramsey degrees. So if you look at the Rado graph, 
and um, you take a finite graph G and you color all the copies inside of the radiograph of G, then, well, no matter how many colors you use to, to color G's copies, there is this one fixed number T of G so that given your coloring, you can always find a subgraph of your original graph, which is again Rado, and so that you have no more than this number of colors for your copies of G inside of there. Um, and, and this T of G is exactly the strong similarity type of the codings of G in, in the binary tree. So you get one color per strong similarity type. So you get a Ramsey theory in that sense, but you don't get it in the sense of one color for every copy of G. So to get a positive answer for this KPT question for the radiograph, then we're gonna have to restrict to copies which have the same strong similarity type. That's, that's a given. Okay, so what is a strong similarity type in case you're not working in this field? Well, it has to do with how we use trees to code graphs. And trees coding graphs goes back to this um, lexicographic ordering of the edge-non-edge -edge relation due to Erdős, Heinel, and Poscha. And this tree representation I've seen in Sauer's paper. So if you start with a, a graph with some vertices, let's linearly order them then a set of nodes is gonna represent this graph if whenever you have a pair M and N, you're gonna have an edge between VN and VM if and only if TN on input length of T of M is one. So this number is called the passing number of TN at TM. And you can see the diagram here, which some of you have seen before. Uh, which is, says that if you have uh, a node here on a tree, then if it passes by this other node here with a one, it's coding an edge. If it passes by another node here with a zero, it's coding no edge. And this T1 is coding an edge with T0. So this, these maximal nodes in this tree are coding this path. So this is the definition of strong similarity. You want to preserve, you know, take initial segments to initial segments, take meets to meets, preserve relative lengths, and preserve passing numbers. So I'll give you a couple of examples of strong similarity types. So this tree, this is a zero here, has these important levels, and it's coding an edge and an edge, so this is a path of length two. Or you could have another strong similarity type that looks like this. So this is coding an edge there and there, or you could have another one that looks like this. And I'm not gonna draw all of them, but there are many, but there are only finitely many, and they can all represent this, the same graph. So these... Ah, it is if it's unordered. So for unordered graphs, these are all the same, and if, if they're ordered, yes, the last one is different. 
Yeah, so we'll, we'll say that S and T are strongly similar exactly when there is a strong similarity map between them. So we want to make a topological, a topological space in which every point's representing a radiograph and every Worrell subset is Ramsey. So we know there's a strong, there's a, a Ramsey theorem for strong trees called Millikan's theorem, which has helped to get the big Ramsey degrees for the radiograph. So I'm gonna do this on two of the less than omegas, the simplest one you could have. Uh, we're gonna let this denote your length. Uh, we're gonna say that T is a tree if there's some infinite level of levels. <laughs> Um, where the tree has nodes exactly of these lengths, L. And then the height of the tree is the number of predecessors um, be below nodes in the tree. And the nth level is the things with height N. And then we say that S is a strong subtree of T if there's some collection of levels MN where each nth level is contained in the mnth level of T and for each n and n and s in s of n, um, if you have an immediate successor just one length above s, then you're gonna have a member of, of s extending that s prime, extending u. Okay, so definition, picture's better. Um, so we have a strong subtree t and of, of two to the less than omega, could look like this, and it's gonna have nodes at length zero, one, three, and six. Okay. And another, oops, another type of strong subtree would look like this. You get the idea, so they don't have to start at the, at, at the base, they can start anywhere. And Millikan's theorem says that if you have a strong tree with no terminal nodes, and you have a coloring of all k-strong trees, where a k-strong tree is something with k-many levels, um, then there's gonna be a strong subtree where all of your k-strong subtrees have the same color. So we give some examples. So given a color of three, coloring of three strong trees into red and blue, like this or this, Uh, you're going to be able to find an infinite tree, which is isomorphic to two to the less than omega, where all of your three strong subtrees have the same color. Okay, so this was used to find the upper bounds for the big Ramsey degrees in the radiograph. Um, you're gonna code the graph using nodes in here. This graph is universal, so you've used the passing number to code edge non-edge say that two nodes on the same level don't have an edge, then the radiograph embeds into there, and you can color your, your copies of your finite graph G as coded inside two to the less than omega. Apply your Millikan theorem once for each strong similarity type, where you can envelop these types into strong subtrees, and then you're gonna get one color per strong similarity type, and this is isomorphic to two to the less than omega, so a radiograph embeds inside of there, and then you're gonna take an anti-chain which goes <coughs> the radiograph, or just take a radiograph inside, and, and you get this upper band that way. Okay, so what are the problems, like, right, your first approach would say, okay, I know I can embed graphs in trees, I know I have this Millikan theorem, uh, we know that it's been successful for big Ramsey degrees of the radiograph. What, what could go wrong for infinite dimensional? Well, if you simply work with the strong trees without knowing how you're coding the radiograph in the beginning, then you're not gonna know which rado subgraph you intended to take when you take a subtree. And the second problem is that if you do the sour thing where you take the anti-chain coding the radiograph, then you have no more room to use Millikan's theorem after that. So this is what we're addressing in this work. So a tree with coat, was there a question? Yes. Okay. So trees with coding nodes um, 
are trees with nodes that code, <laughs> as the name would suggest. Um, so you're looking at a tree, but then I'm adding this um, predicate n, which is going to be either a natural number or omega itself. Uh, the tree relation, the order on n, and then this is our coding node function. So we're going to satisfy the following. T with subset is going to be a tree. Uh, this is going to be your standard linear order on whatever natural number or omega you have. And then C is going to be an injective function from n into T, where we want m less than n to imply the length of Cm is less than the length of C of n. And we're going to call C of n the nth coding node of T. Okay, so these were something that I developed for these big Ramsey degree problems on Henson graphs, which I talked about the triangle-free one last time, and I'm happy to say that the k-click-free ones are done. There's a preprint online. I've spoken about it several times in the past year, so I decided to speak on something new here. Uh, so, you know, they, they, these things were developed to handle forbidden configurations. That was the reason I did it, was to keep track of how do you build something without building a k-click. But then the funny thing was that they turned out to be useful for this problem. So we'll see why. So a space of strong rado coding trees. Let's let R be a rado graph. Let's enumerate its vertices in order type omega. And then we're going to define a tree with coding nodes where your nth coding node represents your nth vertex. And we're going to let the script T sub R consist of all the trees with the coding nodes where T is going to be a strong subtree of 2 to the less than omega. And then we're going to have a strong tree isomorphism between this template tree and the subtrees where it's going to take every coding node to the nth coding node to the nth coding node. OK. So I'm going to call these members of T sub R strong rado coding trees. And the coding nodes of every strong rado coding tree codes a rado graph in exactly the same way. So they're going to be strongly, strongly similar to each other and code rado graphs. So now I'm going to take a particular one that was easy to work with, but you could take any one, fix it, and work with that type. So in this tree, this is representing v0, v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, et cetera, and it's just taking the simplest thing you can think of. And because the Rado graph has this extension property, right, where you have if you have an infinite graph and you have two finite disjoint sets of, no of vertices and you can take another vertex which has an edge with all of these and with none of these, then you are a Rado graph. And so if you read the tree, you can see that by making these coding nodes dense inside of there, you will have this extension property by default. So. Um, because, or in another way you can think of it, is that every finite type over an initial segment of the graph that's been made so far um, is, is realized eventually because these coding nodes are dense. So this is going to be the template coding node, that uh, strong coding tree that I'm working with. And... Then strong similarity for trees with coding nodes is the same four as before, uh, except that four turned into four and five. So now I want to take the nth coding node to the nth coding node. And then now I want to uh, preserve passing numbers at coding nodes rather than just at splitting or maximal node levels. All these passing degrees are both zero and one. No, but 
Yeah. yeah. No, I'm letting them split everywhere. So I'm not doing the sour thing or the um, Devlin thing here. So I'm taking the full binary tree uh, or a full strong tree and then sticking coding nodes in this, in this, this pattern. But I'm allowing everything to split. No. Um, so, so I can draw the graph that this is coding, if you wish. Um, so this is coding. It's a very sparse graph, but it will give you the Rado graph eventually. So the, here's here's um, v zero corresponding to the least coding node there. V1 has no edge with V0. V2 is going to have an edge with V1. Uh, V0, what I drew, not what I said. Uh, V3 has a no, no edge with anything. And then V4 is going to have an edge with V1. Yes. Yes, yes. That's Just, <laughs> that is what I'm doing, yeah. Right, so if you squish down the blue nodes, you'll get two to the less than omega sort of, you know, level, you know, level one, level two, level three, et cetera. You could stick them any way you want in there as long as it's, it's dense and, and this, the same process will work. Okay, so people convinced that this is gonna code a radiograph. Okay, um, so yeah, so strong similarity is same as before except add in coding nodes here. Um, yeah, so passing numbers is gonna be taken care of because you're always splitting left and right anyway. Um, and then a, a typical member of this space is gonna look just like the original one. So we wanna start out, right, every coding node in the red subtree had to be a blue coding node in the original tree. So we're taking subtrees and subsets of coding nodes, and then we want the pattern to be the same. Right, so this is giving you a collection of, of, of subtrees which are strongly similar to the original one. All right, so a slightly stronger version than the, the version that I uh, put up before um, says that every Borel subset of T, this collection of strong trees with coding nodes is completely Ramsey, um, meaning that if you have a, a Borel subset, and now, now what, is my, what is my topology? My topology is the same topology you would have for Millikan strong trees. So you have um, finite, uh, finite strong coding trees, and then the collection of other strong coding trees that end extend it is a basic open set. So this is a metric topology. But you can also talk about, you know, Ellen Tuck open sets. Um, could we remove the stripes? <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, no, they're slightly diagonal. <laughs> it's the shades, yeah, yeah, it's the shades. Or maybe not. That's all right. Okay, so hopefully nobody's distracted by that. <laughs> 
No, so, so right now I'm, Borel is referring to, so this is referring to completely Ramsey in the sense of Galvin Prickery, but this is referring to the metric topology in terms of, of Millikan strong trees. I, no, no, you don't. Well, you don't satisfy A32, but I'll get there. Yeah. Um, so R is the collection of all radographs, um, which are subgraphs of this original layout of a radograph, which are coded by coding nodes of some member of this tree. So I'm making a correspondence between the trees and the original question of subgraphs of the radiograph. And uh, so reinterpreted, this script R is going to be the set of all radiographs, which are subgraphs of the original one that we laid out in order type omega, which are induced by trees, which with induced trees strongly similar to the original one. So there's this back and forth that you can go between these particular radiographs that are coded by the coding nodes in the trees and the trees themselves. So this now is forming a subspace of the bare space with the metric topology. And for a given member of, so for a given radiograph in this space, let's define the R cube to be all of the R primes in the space which are induced subgraphs of R. And then the above theorem in terms of the original question is saying that every Borel subset of, of R is Ramsey in the sense that if you have a Borel set in this subspace of, of the bare space and a member of R, then there is a sub radiograph so that this cube is either contained in or, or disjoint from X. Okay, this is slightly a weaker statement than this one, if you're really following. Okay. All right, so the proof ideas. Um, <laughs> how do you show a collection of sets as Borel? You show that all your, your open sets are completely Ramsey, all your complements are completely Ramsey, and they are closed under countable unions. Fine. Okay. So the catch is one and three. One and three are actually the hard parts. That was a surprise to me. And I'm going to use a, a forcing argument, um, which is simpler than the ones in the K quick free graph papers, but um, still more involved than the original. Uh, Halpern likely forcing proof by, by Harrington. So the hypothesis for the main lemma is given a member of this space of strong rado trees, where I've dropped the subscript because it got onerous. Um, and okay, so I'm going to make a picture of the hypotheses for the lemma because because I didn't have a 3-2 axiom of Stavo's book, I had to find a way around it to do amalgamation processes. So this is the way around it. So we've got a big Rado coding tree T. We've got some initial segment D. So our N of T is nth um, is initial segment of T with N levels. Okay. And then I'm looking at some subset of, of, of max of D. So let's make that a color. So let's make it real simple. Let's say A is just this. And now I'm going to be a little specific. So let's say A is starting like this. So this is not a coding node. These are coding nodes. And now A plus is the immediate successors. So this would be A plus. And now I want to have a flexible way of extending these. So I want to be able to extend 
where maybe I wanted to fix A like this and extend to a, a strong coding tree, but maybe I only wanted to take one extension and sort of ignore the fact that this is a coding node and extend to something like this. Okay, so there's two possibilities, the case A and case B. This would be case B. So if I'm in case B, then this, um, this set B is going to be these two nodes. And now we're wanting to end extend these to copies of an initial segment of a strong coding tree. So we're gonna to wanna to look at all extensions like this. And they may have vastly different colors. Maybe you have another one where you have that screen and you went this way and you colored that pair green. Maybe you extended uh, another way to another coding node. Maybe that pair was green. And so we're wanting to look at all of these extensions of this particular type, and we want to have a subtree that's another strong rado tree that's gonna have one color for all of these types. Okay, so B is gonna denote the subset of the immediate successors of A that we want to end extend to the K plus first approximations, which are the objects being colored. And K is given according to these two cases. I've drawn case B up there because it's the less, uh, less intuitive one. And then we're gonna define the collection of K plus one extensions of B into T and the star here is because this may or may not have taken that level as a member of the extension. You may have just decided, okay, I need to skip the fact that this is a coding node and extend to another one above. Okay, and then the lemma is that if you have a coloring of these types of extensions of B into finitely many colors, then there's gonna be a strong Rado coding tree and extending D, so taking the full width of this initial approximation of a strong Rado tree um, so that H is monochromatic on here. And this is what gets you around not having amalgamation as an axiom. So this is what's gonna allow you to do these um, um, diagonalization proofs over finite initial segments of your tree to get one color in the end. So that part is used in uh, getting that the union of uh, countably many CR star sets is still CR star. And this lemma has as a corollary that uh, basic metrically open sets have the Ramsey property. So this gives you the, the pigeonhole or the A4 axiom for free. Okay, so the lemma is restated again up there. Um, this is an extent or a broadening of the Ellen Tuck open sets. So I just want to be a little bit more flexible about what I'm including in here. And this K is coming from A or B. And then we're gonna say that a subset is CR star if for every non-empty subset of here, there's going to be, uh, for every non-empty set of this type, there's an S in there so that you're either contained in X or, or disjoint from X. Okay, so the lemma is used to show that the open sets in here are CR star, that's what I said already, and then it's also used to do these fusion arguments for the countable unions of CR star sets. So this is a little bit stronger than completely Ramsey. Sorry? So, um, don't you have to, do you have to present that on the final segment of the equation you have a case B? 
so that the tree will get the most on Um No, because we're we're finding the, the homogeneity above B, but within a tree that's as wide as, as D. So we're so we're fixing this piece here, and, and, and that's exactly the point is that we're gonna build on you know the sides that are irrelevant to the coloring. We're still gonna keep building the tree, but but you're safe with one color here. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit about the forcing. Um, forcing as a method of unbounded search. Probably should remind you of recursion theory. <laughs> um, this is using a simplified version of, of forcings in these papers, and it, which built on Harrington's proof of Halpern Likely theorem. So I didn't mention Halpern Likely theorem, but maybe, basically it's, it's this, but a little bit simplified. Okay. So I'll give some ideas, hopefully, in the next few minutes. Um, so given a member of, of our strong rado tree space, which is contained in T, I'm gonna define these extensions of B into U to be these max Cs where you're coloring them contained in U. So basically, these sorts of objects as the extension BU. Okay. And we're gonna define a coloring now H prime on this set from H as what it would be if you took the kth approximation of A and then tacked on X at the end. Okay. And we're gonna let D plus one be the number of nodes here. So right here, D plus one is uh, two. And this would be um, S1 or SD, I'll call it here, and this would be S0. And we're gonna let L be the collection of all the levels or lengths which has a member of here. So not every level has a coding node extending SD. We're just gonna take the levels that do because that's the only thing we care about. So now let TI be the things that are end extending SI and let kappa be large enough so that you have the erdos rado theorem for colorings into countably many colors. And then the following forcing notion um, is if you used it fully, would add kappa many branches through each ti. Sorry? Ah, uh, thank you, sorry, sorry. Ah, yes, yeah, thank you. Here's a plus. <laughs> I can't write it on there, but yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so if you actually used this forcing, you would add kappa many branches through each tree, but we're not gonna actually do that because it won't do what you want it to do anyway. So our goal is to find some tree end extending D for which H is monochromatic on the set. So we're gonna apply it in, four, in finite increments without ever moving to a generic extension. So this is the lovely heart of, of the idea of Harrington right here. Um, so we're gonna define our partial order to look very like Cohen forcing, except the DEF member is going to become a coding node at some level where one exists, extending SD. And then we're gonna make the partial ordering be like Cohen partial ordering, so end extension and uh, and then like Harrington's forcing proof, we're going to let B dot I alpha denote the alpha generic branch in TI, and note that then P has to force this to be PI alpha at the appropriate level of P, and then let B sub D be this singular branch of the P of Ds. And now, slightly differently from the Harrington proof, um, we're gonna let L dot D be a P name for the set of lengths of coding nodes in B dot D, because not every member of L is gonna be what we need. And then we're going to make an ultra filter name on L dot D. 
And then we are going to make some collection of P sub vec alphas where it decides a color on U dot many L's levels and that they are given by one color. And then you're gonna do some uh, Ramseyology, which is uh, going to use this Erdos-Rado theorem to obtain infinitely many, infinite disjoint sets Ki so that this lemma holds. Okay. So once you have this lemma, then if you work through what this means, that these are all compatible, it means that every piece of VEC alpha on the same, on the alpha ith input is giving you the same node, and every PVEC on D is giving you the same node, and these are where you start to build your monochromatic subtree. Okay. So the forcing does two things for you with this lemma. It gets you these good starting points, and then it tells you that you can keep going. So you have, uh, oh, yeah, let's just do it here. So you would have some nice starting points. Let's say that's TD star. This is T0 star. And, you know, maybe you want this level in your tree and maybe you didn't. So if you wanted it, you take it and you extend to other places so that you have the right, you know, the right stuff where you need it. and over here, and then for several levels, you don't need to do anything because you don't have a coding node extending SD. So then you just build it by hand and say, okay, I need a coding node to extend this one, and then I need one to extend this one, and so forth. And then you get to the, well, not that one, and then you get to the, set, the point where you needed to extend another place above here, and then you say, okay, I need this node, and I need the ones that are extending here to be good, and you make some condition using these and these with the PVEC alphas being below that condition so that you know that you can get the same color that you did here. And that's how you build. So you build, use forcing, build by hand, use forcing, build by hand, interweaving them until you get your, the tree that you wanted. So you're gonna build a Rado subtree in here where we wanted it. The coloring's gonna be monochromatic. Um, this is what I just said. And so then the strongest version of the main theorem is that the CR star subsets of T um, contains all the Borel subsets of T in the metric topology. So why only Borel? Because um, I was under a time constraint <laughs> to get this into a certain, um, uh, the Ramsey theory doc course in, in, uh, in Prague from 2016 had a deadline for their submission, so <laughs> I got this and I, I didn't get the, uh, the fullest one for, uh, you know, the, the analog of, of the Ellen Tuck theorem because these methods don't pull over to that. So something else is gonna be needed for that. I did not check analytic. It's likely that that will follow from, from what I did. Um, so as I mentioned before, these, these strong coding trees space, uh, it satisfies all 3.5 axioms of Todorcevich, not the amalgamation. That's why I did that funny lemma. Um, and this Halpern likely style theorem is what you, you do for the fusion so that you can do these, these galvin perkey arguments, but they're not sufficient for the Allen Tuck arguments. Um, so remarks and questions. We could find, uh, fix any strong similarity type of a tree with coding nodes coding the radograph. Do the whole same thing. You will get the same, uh, the same results. So pick your favorite flavor of, of strong similarity type do this stuff, it works, right? Um, so there's nothing particular about the types of trees I fixed here. 
except that they're the simplest ones um, in terms of describing. Um, trees with coding nodes and these forcing arguments were developed for forbidden k-clicks, but I thought it was fun that they actually worked for things which don't have anything that's forbidden because it kept track of what graph and what subgraph you were coding. Um, and uh, these, this lemma that I mentioned here has already really been done in these other papers, so it should work for the Henson graphs also. Um, so a question what other Freise structures are going to have infinite dimensional Ramsey theory back to the KPT question. Um, and is there a topological Ramsey space of radiographs? And it's not, okay, so I haven't checked that this isn't a topological Ramsey space, but I know for a fact it does not satisfy A32. Okay, so then this is in this paper here. And then these are the other references. And uh, so thank you for your attention. And I will put this.